Hey guys, this is Ashley and Rest, and this is She Wolf Alchemy. And today we are talking about grownups in training. We are the new adults, y'all. And we keep saying that even though I feel like we've been adults for at I least mean, 10 plus years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're in our 30s. You know, I, you know what? I talked to a young man today, um, a 21 year old, and I, he was like, you know, as your elder, you know, as my elder. And I was like, my elder. First of all, when we oh, met, I thought I was 25. Don't you remember that young man? Uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah no, we, we've been adults. Um, it just does not feel like it. It just does not feel like it. I don't know if this was you. I feel like it was you because I remember the response. But like, I think this was like a year or two ago that I saw a picture of somebody. It was like on one of those blogs. It was some celebrity's girlfriend. Uh, and she looked absolutely gorgeous. And I think I sent it to you. And I was like, and I think she was like turning 30 or like 28 or something like that. Like still young. And I was like, these are the type of posts that make me realize I still feel like I'm 22. I was like, because me and her are in the same age group. And I'm like, that's what an adult looks like, Russ. You're not that. <laughs> You're not an adult. Mm -hmm. And Every now and then I'll just have these moments where I'm just in life doing something. And then I see another human being being an adult and I'm like, oh yeah, you're 32. Mm -hmm. Act like it. And then I, I don't know, start doing taxes. I don't know. I just know I don't feel grown. <laughs> I don't know when I have those moments, but it, it also makes me question like, did we do... <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it makes me question, like, do we just have a misconception on what adults feel like? Because we think our, I mean, we have realizations all the time where we are like, oh, our parents didn't have it all the way together. Or like, they didn't know shit. It just kind of seemed like it because, because I didn't know shit. And then, so it's like, what do we, do we, does anyone know what adulthood, what is it supposed to feel like that we're not feeling? <laughs> No, I don't know, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's not there. I mean, yes, some of it I definitely do think is we were kids looking at these grown people and be like, uh -huh. yeah, they're making, that's adulting right there. And yeah. we assume they know what they're doing and they, they didn't. But some of it was like legit. Like yeah. some of it was legit. Like I, every now and then think about my mom when she was my age and I'm just like, nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no way she was as goofy as I am right now. There's no way. I don't, so I, I have... see old videos and stuff of her. Like, don't get me wrong. Every now and then, you know, I, I find out about her nickname back in the day. Apparently used to be Riri. Mm -hmm. And I hear okay. about Riri's adventures and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you, I'm, okay. But like, still other times I hear stories and they'll just be like, your mom, that time your mom was running for a political office and she did da, 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 da. she was amazing at 22 and i'm like what the hell like, no she, <laughs> i'm definitely yeah. not the same type of adult my parents were that's fair i have moments where i'll be talking to my mom about something that like i cannot overcome like how i get super avoidant about certain things like i don't know what's wrong with me when i don't want to do something like I have, I'll try to be like, I'm going to take social media off my phone. I'm going to stop participating in my vices, which currently I'm pregnant. I can't take care, take, partake in those types of things. And I still find ways to avoid things I don't want to do. I was like, it has nothing to do with any of these things I thought it did. I will stare at my hands for 20 minutes if I really and will be entertained by that if I really don't want to do something. So like, I'll be talking to my mom about it. And she's like, yeah, me too. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, because to me, it's like the woman I grew up with was on my ass and everything was tight and was done and we had a schedule and blah, 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 blah. So like, what do you mean you be bullshitting at work? What do you mean sometimes you don't make up your bed? What you mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Anytime she's just like, yeah, I got stuff I avoid too. Yes, I get easily distracted by things too. And I'm just like, who are you? And why didn't you tell me this? before so that's, sometimes I feel like it's that like we just really they have they're like so good at hiding stuff from us when we're kids oh yeah oh yeah and we don't realize like yeah they be struggling the same regular ass human shit that we struggle with 
Well, and I told you this. I definitely had like a moment with that. I think dads are more clockable. They they don't even feel like they got it together when we're kids. We're just kind of mm-hmm. like, thank God mom keeps you alive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. At least that was my experience. I was just always like, mm-hmm. you need someone watching you at all times. Um, but like that transition of like being like, my dad is Superman. To being like, okay, my my dad's a man. Okay, <laughs> he, he's a child. He is a grown <laughs> child. There's just like this like weird slide mm-hmm. that happens mm-hmm. from like being five mm-hmm. to like being 16 to being whenever you're grown and just being like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Um, That definitely, I feel like definitely, definitely happens. I still really haven't had that for my mom though. I think my mom has just always been grown as hell. Even now, she's very different, like you, very different from the woman I grew up with. Mm-hmm. Like, completely, com- complete and total stranger. Every now and then, my daughter will ask me something. And, you know, because my mom's here and my mom will be there and I, she'll ask me weird things about my childhood. One, someone, someone told her about Ohio and I'm from Ohio and they did not tell her pleasant things about Ohio. So now mm-hmm. she just trolls me randomly. She'll just walk mm-hmm. up to me, like as I'm like washing dishes or something. And she'd be like, Mom, I'm like, what? She's like, You're from Ohio? And I'm like, You know, I'm from Ohio. <laughs> Lame. And then we'll walk away. <laughs> just, 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 okay. Bully me. But every now and then she'll ask me something about like my childhood for some reason. She's just going through this phase where she really wants to know what I was like as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember what it was, but it was something about my childhood that she asked me about, like, oh, mom, did you blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, no, mommy didn't really get to do that. And she was like, why? And I was like, well, your grandparents were was really religious and <laughs> did not like mommy to have too much fun. Um, and my mom <laughs> happened to be there during one of these times. That's usually how my answer goes, because that's usually the reason sure. why. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually true. It's usually true. And so this time she came and it wasn't one of those type answers, but it was one of those, like <laughs> those sweet people who love and don't like you so much were highly critical when I was a child. It was like one of those type of things. Mm-hmm. And um, it was weird because I had to do it in front of my mom. And I was just like, well, the person to my, to her. yeah, <laughs> to my left used to have very different opinions. Very different <laughs> They're, well, they're, they're, they weren't really big on letting me free and run wild and exploring stuff. And so, and so mommy didn't get to have that experience. And so like now I get to joke around with her a little bit more and be like, yeah, she's more like that. She's definitely a different person, but she still don't, she's still, she's the Beyonce of our family. Mm-hmm. My mom mm-hmm. is the perfectionist that like does things a certain way to a certain key. So she, I think when you have those type of traits, you just always feel grown. And she's also a Virgo. So yeah, she's just, yeah. Yeah. So no, I have not had those moments yet. I think that <laughs> would help me be like, yeah, no, we're all just bumbling around figuring out, but no. Yeah. I mean, I've noticed there's lots of things my mom is like up on and on. And then there's other stuff where I'm like, okay. I, uh-huh. I, mm, okay. <laughs> just like, I just, I see more humanness. Yeah. in her you know than I have previously but there's some other stuff where I'm like man especially when it comes to finances I think that is a sign for our generation that is like the biggest thing that um keeps us from feeling super adulty it's mm-hmm. just not it's just like most of us don't have the finances to live the life that we thought we would be living in our adulthood where yeah and I have those <laughs> moments too because I'm going to be like, yeah, I remember, um, like, I remember one time we were talking about just like work. I was just upset. I just didn't, just didn't fucking have enough money. And mm-hmm. she was like, I remember, you know, I got a second job and it just really helped me. And I was like, yeah, you were like 22, 23. I too had a second job mm-hmm. when I was in my early twenties. But do you think me as a woman in her thirties with a master's degree should have to get a second fucking job sure. just to make ends meet? Does that does that make sense to you? And she was like, oh no. And I was like, right. I think that should be a sign that like there's something wrong with the system or the times right now. Not not me. Where? It's not that I don't work hard enough. I promise you that. 
And she was like, oh, hmm. Just, <laughs> I had never thought of that. And it's like, okay, yeah, I bet you did it, you know? <laughs> but I think, I feel like that's a big thing for our generation. It's just like, we can't afford the lives we thought we were going to have. Yeah. I definitely think that's the biggest reason. Like, mm-hmm. I think um, if I have money, um, if I have community also we don't have the same community and it's hard I think that even ties into the money thing so it's harder to feel like that stability that's what's missing Uh we don't feel like adults because we're millennials and we've never been stable Uh our meds ain't been stable finances ain't been stable our relationships they're they're rocky Uh uh-huh it's the stability. I think that's what's missing. I think the nineties had some stability. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we didn't, we didn't get to have those things. We, we turned 18, moved to colleges four hours away, jump states where we had no friends, mm-hmm. uh, went, got more schooling, traveled and did all this stuff, got a lot of debt and then, and then got, 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 got stuck in cities where rents we could not afford that's and we don't feel like adults yep that's part of it mm-hmm. um I, when i think about like uh like feeling like a grown-up in trading i think about like the myths of about adulthood and i feel like the biggest myth about adulthood is like i when i become an adult i can do whatever i want to do uh-huh <laughs> yeah and you can't <laughs> no. You can't. If anything, I honestly feel more restricted sometimes as an adult than I did as a child. Hmm. And I grew up in a very strict household, so that's that's, that's a saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's saying a lot. Hmm. I let me, let me paraphrase. The daughter of that household grew up in a very strict household. Everybody else was having fun. Okay. Boys doing other things. Okay. Um, but. Because as an adult, you have you have such mo- you have much more awareness of your actions, mm-hmm. and so it's not your your freedom comes with a lot of restriction. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mama look at me crazy if I did that. Mm-hmm. Mm, I can't really do that because I that might coincide with my job and my career and I can't have this thing on the side and this thing on the side and so okay I gotta kind of curb that um mm-hmm. financially can I afford finances <laughs> finances is gonna be a reoccurring thing mm-hmm. so just FYI but I can't have the money to afford it like it just comes with a lot of rules when you're a kid you don't recognize that there's rules so you just gotta do if there's no one there to stop you and usually there's an adult to come in and fix the mess that's true to me yeah I don't know I felt like I had a lot of stuff put on me for like to be responsible when I was younger I think I'm way more chill (laughs) as an adult and I wish I could tell my younger self like chill out is not that serious yeah, because everything was like every decision you make now impacts your future. If mm-hmm. you do this, you will be poor the rest of your life. If you do that, you will never get a good job. If you do, and then with my mom being in the military, she made stuff seem like, uh, <laughs> just like if you do this, it's gonna impact me in my career. So like walk this straight line and do these things because if you don't, then you're going to mess me up. And then that messes us up as a family and like our livelihood and everything will will go to shit because you were out here being a kid. You forget some shit, forget my like ID or something. It's like, how could you lose that? I mean, as a therapist, I'm not liking what I'm hearing. As someone with like heavy Pluto aspects, I'm like, yeah, your mom, your mom, I want to take some notes. She might have, she might have, huh? I don't know. You turned out okay. Man, uh, please, whatever. <laughs> I just had, like I said, the weight of the world was like, oh, my good behavior. And no. free children. We want free children that feel also, free to be yeah. themselves to us, as long as it I, doesn't hurt anyone. I was having this conversation with my little sister who is 15 um, just earlier last week. Um, of just like, I was like, I don't ever wish to be a kid again. <laughs> I was 
like, I'm gonna tell you right now. Cause she was like, I don't know. Like, cause she'll, she's someone who's going to graduate when she's like 17. So she's only got a couple more years. And I was like, and then you'll just be off in the world. And like, hope, hopefully that goes well for you, you know? <laughs> and she okay. was like, hold on. <laughs> Not, mm-hmm, you know, hopefully that goes well for you. Okay. I was just like, oh, can you I hope send so Danny well. to me after you talk to her? Just every, after y'all talk every time, they'd be like, okay, we're going to tag Caress in. That's so funny. No, but I was just like, mm, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. And she was like, I, I do worry about it sometimes. And I was like, girl, to be honest with you, for me, being a grown up is way better. <laughs> being a kid, I was like, I'm not going to lie to you. I never want to be a teen again. I never want to be a child again, but that's because of the circumstances I grew up in. Like the yeah. life she's having is way more fancy. Yeah. Like I'm sure she'll look back and be like, gosh, I wish I was a kid again. I have never, ever had that thought. No, no, no. Okay. Let me be very clear. Never. <laughs> I want to go back to my childhood. <laughs> my daughter's childhood seems pretty damn awesome though. Like yeah, she's having a good time. If 10 years from now, I end up on a therapist couch. I'm going to be very pissed. I'm like, I did all the things. I did all the things. Mm -hmm. I would love to go to her childhood. She seems to be having a blast. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel you. But but no, it it is. But it's it's still a thing, like you said, where you just kind of grow up and you're like, man, I thought I was just going to get to do whatever. But like, I still got to go to bed at a certain time. Yeah. I can keep my ass up and go to work. And that's true. That's but that is, I think, how you know you've reached true adulthood because young adulthood, like, 30s are like the adolescence of adulthood. It's when you really start to like be like, oh shit, this is real. Mm-hmm. Your 20s are like the infancy of the infancy and childhood of adulthood. Yeah. <laughs> Where, yeah, I definitely would do some shit like stay up till six o'clock in the morning out bullshitting and partying and carrying on. And I got to go to work at 8 30. Mm-hmm. Catch a little nap. If that, take a shower and be on my way. There is no way in hell <laughs> I, I could survive a day from Oklahoma to Georgia, a 24 hour drive straight, knowing I had class the next morning, was about to move into my apartment to start grad school. And was just like, yeah, and it, and, and it made it through, made it through four classes, came home, slept, and then just kept doing that for four more days. Ridiculousness. Mm-hmm. Ridiculousness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I finally did realize though, that like, oh, I have a, I have a big girl job and I have sick leave and PTO. I don't have to go to work hungover. (laughs) That was a different level of like, I was like, oh, I've reached somewhere. I can just call out sick (laughs) because I have hangover. Didn't stop me from doing late night. Now being again, older responsible is like, how many hangovers can you have? Who the fuck wants to ever drink that much? No, thank you. The, the, um, the payback for a night like that is not worth it. I am not losing an extra day or two of my life so that I can have a few more drinks. It's not happening. Yeah. But when you're in your twenties or your early, especially your early twenties, that shit is because it because you can dust it off. Like you know, it's a couple hours, a little throw up in the morning. You keep it pushing. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Those are things that even though I know it's like, oh, I don't feel like you're I don't feel like I'm in my 30s. Those are the things that let me know I'm in my 30s because I don't make the same dumb ass decisions. <laughs> and I think the perspective of what freedom looks like shifts as well, because that's what you think of freedom as when you're younger. Like, oh, you get to do whatever you want. You can stay up as late as you want. You can try. try. I don't know what the hell I thought I was going to be doing, but... <laughs> But now it's more like, no, freedom is like having actual free time where I feel good and well rested. That that's I love that. I teach that. That is not (laughs) wait, wait, wait. freedom is no older than me. When do I reach that level, Ashley? Girl. Is it this year? I turned 33 in a couple months. Is it this year? Is it my this year? So it it takes about that mid-30 range. I explain it to uh, my boyfriend all the time because he's 32. And so I crack on him for being, he's like, why did you, and I'm like, you're in your early thirties. I am in my mid (laughs) thirties. It is different. I'm not saying you're so much younger or whatever, but I just want you to know it's a little bit different. Okay. He still got a little, yeah. But anyway, um, 
but no, freedom me feels like, but I mean, that won't be my life too much longer, but not having responsive, not, not necessarily not responsibilities, but not obligations. That is freedom. Okay. I, again, have not reached that little thing. You, I have all types yourself. of obligations. Huh? But you do it to yourself, though, because you add so much shit to yourself. You find a day where you have free time and you're like, how can I work? How can I do shit? Like, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm not I'm like, good at resting it. I don't yeah. My pockets, though. I be having my moments. Also, I already booked two vacations for earlier this okay. year. I bought the tickets. Mm-hmm. At the hotels, like Good job, put in time out off, mm-hmm. or inform them I'm I'm going to be off. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, you're getting there. Yeah, I'm getting back there. I'm mm-hmm. getting back there. Um, instead of like just working until my body burns out and then I have to take off. Uh, yeah, yeah that was my twenties, but mm-hmm. no, I for me it's definitely I don't feel. 30 I don't feel like I'm in my 30s most of the time until Mm -hmm. I'm with people in their 20s and then you're quickly reminded like oh yeah kind of like you said there's just certain things that they'll do or want to do and you're like Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. that's gonna take you years to recover that off your credit score (laughs) like you're just like (laughs) Uh uh-huh just very very conscious of like certain things and then you're like yeah, no I'm I'm not that age okay so maybe mm-hmm. I maybe I am but I guess there's just a certain level of seriousness I think I was supposed to reach and kind of like you I feel like I have the Benjamin Button effect I was a very serious child mm-hmm. just a very little serious person and I feel like I am getting younger personality wise because I am feeling more free I'm feeling more myself I'm feeling more comfortable in my skin I'm feeling more comfortable to be myself explore uh-huh. different sides of who I am and so I think that sometimes stops me from feeling because I'm like no I'm supposed to be serious now but uh-huh. and I was serious when I was 10 so I'm supposed to be even more serious and I'm like and I'm goofy as hell and I'm uh-huh. like you're getting goofier <laughs> you're not getting more serious <laughs> you're not and I don't think that's how that's supposed to go yeah, I think I was supposed to get like more like my mom, I think. And I'm mm-hmm. realizing like, no, if anything, I feel like I started off like a little mini me and then I became more of myself. Yeah. That's yeah, that makes sense. Happening. Yeah, I think that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> no, where? I don't know. I guess it's my mom's kind of goofy. Like she just, she just is, so I don't think of it as like a. And then I have, and I'm I know you do too. Like when you have friends that are so much older than you, like I have friends that are like in their late fifties, mm-hmm. who are like, I'm not a grown up. Like they will, <laughs> they would even be yeah. like, I'm not for real. No. I don't feel like a for real grown up. And you're like, okay, so the the feeling never really kicks in. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> I was hanging out with one of my homegirls. So she was talking about some one of the episodes we did. And then she said something. I can't remember it was, but we had a conversation mm-hmm. that I had with my friend Gabby. And Gabby is probably the youngest friend that I have. And that's Gabby is two months younger than me. Every, mm-hmm. Most of my friends are older. And me and her were having the same conversation. And I was like, oh, you're not a grown up either. Okay, cool. <laughs> like I so like maybe we just all not a grown up in I can't remember what we were talking about but it was something very juvenile like, mm-hmm. it was nonsensical nonsensical mm-hmm. nonsense and we were all very deeply invested in this nonsense and I was like okay okay mm-hmm. so f- probably not 40s either okay <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah I was like something 50s 50s, mm-hmm. 50s when I get a little serious hmm one thing that would definitely make me feel older is if I feel it because this is something I thought was just gonna happen in my 30s I will say that I thought it was just gonna happen upon me it's just like a really strong sense of like my own personal style and like my home was gonna be decorated to suit that style and like I would dress a certain way to suit that style and I would just be really strong in that I thought that was just gonna happen it has not (laughs) Yeah. Um, some of it is financials. 
some of it, especially with clothes, it's just like my body changes every other year. It seems like um, COVID. I mean, lots of, and we also have to remember this. Our generation has had so many significant things that have happened that have like redirected our course on multiple occasions. We have to be very real about that. But when I go into like, like there's an older woman that I um, interact with a lot at work. When I uh, see her, she always, it just looks like everything in her closet goes together. Like I have never, even when she's like dressed down casual, she still is like to the T, like head to toe, mm -hmm. you know, everything matches, everything is whatever. The rings, all the rings she has on her hands, it's like, you can just tell that over the years, she has just like selected them and was like, this one goes on this finger and this one goes on that finger. And like, and then I had the opportunity to go to her home and I was like, oh my God, like it was just so nice. Now, anyone like her will tell you these things take time. Mm -hmm. I have been, you know, curating my home for i've been in this house for 20 years and i've been curating every little piece of it to get it to this point but we just walk in and see it like mm -hmm. oh my god like everything everything matches this and is that and then blah 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 blah. and then like my house is like you know like i don't, I don't know <laughs> i got some art on the walls over here i got some other shit <laughs> leaning on the corner over there I got a room that I'd rather no one go in because I don't know what is happening over there. Like curtains that ain't hung up proper. Like it's just, it's just not. <laughs> Where I lay my head and watch my TV. Okay. <laughs> probably the most well-decorated part is, is probably my bedroom, but everything else is just like, eh, we, it's kind of haphazard. Um, I'm hoping when I move into my next place that like I'll be able to like, Get, get a little bit closer. Low bed. Hmm? Do you still have a low bed? Oh yeah, that's my favorite thing. I won't anymore though, unfortunately. Yeah, I was because I was like, how is that working out for you as your pregnancy is progressing? Because at mean, some point you're just gonna have to roll. That's is that not why I need a low bed? No, I'm saying because you have a low bed. If you had a high bed, you could uh -huh. just get up like a person. <laughs> like how? getting up actually <laughs> well my my wonderful beautiful queen bed that i have enjoyed is not gonna work for my large king man so i will not be in it much anymore after a freaking few weeks give up my poor bed but anyway let's neither here nor there <laughs> so that's what i mean by like hopefully in that home will like the combined forces will come together and we'll be able to like decorate a little more but anyway that was definitely something I thought like as I got older would just like come together on its own. I'm, you know, as our thirties have teach us that a lot of things that we thought were just going to happen actually take effort. Um, <laughs> and thought and planning. Yeah, every and time that that's the answer, I'm genuinely surprised. <laughs> it's like, oh, every time a new life problem happens. It's like, Hey, time and effort. I'm like again, again. <laughs> no, for real. There's no other answers, universe. It's like, why do we even study for the test? Why do we even study for the test if this is the answer? Mm -hmm. Effort, yeah. planning, time. You're like, how do you how do you make friends at this age? Effort, time, uh -huh. planning. How does one make money? Every every fucking thing. <laughs> so every time I want a different answer. Yeah takes research and I hate to shop too so I really don't know where why I thought I don't know what the hell I thought was gonna happen but like I said I've learned and someone told me this that's something that I remember I think about her so much when I was in my 20s I remember talking to this older woman Miss Dina yeah. that I worked with and she was like and I was like I'm grinding now so I can coast when I get to my 30s mm -hmm. and she was like ah, like laughed at me like yeah. silly little girl that is not how that works. She was like, your thirties are when you really, you really gonna understand the grind when you're thirties. Yeah. She was like, because the things that you really want, like you're gonna really, you're gonna really feel compelled to like go for them. Like that relationship you want, that job you want, that whatever, whatever. And I was just like, in my mind, I wasn't disrespectful towards her, but in my mind, I was thinking, girl, I don't know what, how you squandered your twenties, but I'm not you and... <laughs> And like, I'm doing all that grind stuff now. And in my thirties, I'm be coasting, like, just watch. Hey, words. 
come out our mouth girl. laughing at us. Like, girl. And I think I remember emailing her one day because it was just on my mind so heavy of like, that lady told me. Mm-hmm. That lady told me. And, and my 30s have proved that <laughs> time and time again that like, no, this is a different type of grind. Like, it's not the grind in my 20s where it was like, team no sleep, woo, 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 this, this, and that. But no, like, truly, like, to get to that next level is like a push that, like, I just did not, not anticipate. You know, I believe we've talked about this on here before, where it's just like learning that, like, oh, no, in this phase of life, I can't just follow the path. I have to, like, plan the path, build the path walk the path, trust the path. Like it's a whole other thing than versus like when we're in our twenties and it's just like, I graduated and now I'm going to go to school. Now I'm going to get a job. Like you kind of have things laid out for you. And then by the time you get to your mid to late twenties, the path just runs out. And then you're like, I don't have the things I wanted yet. (laughs) They did not materialize in front of me. How do I get them? And we come back to like, yeah, because you now it's your turn. Now you have to plan this this next phase of your life. And that's a whole different type of grind, so to speak. I still don't, I don't like using the word because it just is so it just it comes with so much. But it's a different type of grind to mm-hmm. have to actually create that path. So, yeah, that's that's definitely something. My whole 20s was like mapped out for me, not that I was necessarily fully following the map, but Mm -hmm. very much, you know, and then if I do this, I'm going to do this for a little bit. I'll network and meet these people. Then I move up to here and I did it and I need to do something. And and my 30s hit and my 30s was like, okay, so path taken away. Mm -hmm. And like you said, figure it out. Mm -hmm. and I really thought if I follow this path in my 20s my 30s will be and now we're arrived you have arrived and now we just coast until until our duck nap that's what that's what happens and you're right no I knocked on 30s door opened it and it was an empty house and it was like yeah you gotta decorate all this shit (laughs) you got the house but like now you gotta put stuff in it and you have to build it this is a DIY (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. it's a different type of thing and I think again that takes us back to like those things that don't make us feel like an adult because we thought that adulthood meant you just would know certain things and you would just have certain things figured out when really a big part at least in mine and our adulthood that I've noticed from everybody around me is it's a lot of figuring shit out it, you don't just know <laughs> really don't just know and you don't always figure it out right like <laughs> no no you do not <laughs> sometimes you figure it out it's the wrong idea it's the wrong plan and you do that for 20 years yeah yeah and and but see this is going back to like talking about our parents like they didn't necessarily show us every time I mean I don't know about yours but I know my like I don't know did my mom make mistakes? You know what I mean? <laughs> like in terms of her career or other things, like I don't feel like those types of things were shown um, to me. And so as an adult, when I'm making certain mistakes or I don't figure something out the first time or I don't have all the answers, those are the things that make you feel like, damn, like I'm really not doing good at this grown up thing. But in actuality, it's just because your parents didn't sit you down and was like, so I made a bad investment. No, no, not necessarily because my parents did. My parents mm-hmm. did because, you know, um, not to get too deep into it, but, you know, like my parents had things that happened that were very public and was talked about. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it was shown to me and I, I had to deal with it because it changed our whole life for like three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and being able to, you know, kind of witness like, oh, OK, this is what's happening here. This is what people are saying. I don't, you know, all those sorts of things. And still that <laughs> same feeling of like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm doing all right. Maybe because like, I know my mom was in the military and their path is just kind of laid out yeah, yeah, for the most part. And I think I had, I had to realize that myself. And sometimes I have those conversations with her of like, my life is so different than yours. Like if you showed up every day and really did your best, like you could count on a promotion. I ain't. I think I've had like one job that actually was like, and here's a promotion. Like Mm -hmm. every other jump I've had is because I had to job hop or I had to go and like just do something else. It's a huge leap of faith that um, 
I think my mom is experiencing now that she's retired because that was a big huge leap of faith for her to be like to jump away from the government and just yeah you you out here with us civilians you know <laughs> you could and she's good she's fine but that took something that like I think I had to figure out in my life because things were just not that linear yeah like I just had to figure it out even moving to a different state I took a pay cut it has been I have had to scrap to get back to mm -hmm. <laughs> the financial stability that I had and I and I I almost giggled to even call it stable, but to get back to where I was, like has, <laughs> has taken some work, but it was a huge leap of faith, foolishness, hopes, dreams to, you know, be like, oh, no, man, this is gonna cost me. Mm -hmm. um, and just stuff like that. Like, I don't think I was prepared for that type of stuff. Well, not mentally, I shouldn't say. I was not mentally prepared for that. And yeah, I don't think, my mom didn't start sharing you know, um, certain failures with me until, you know, as an adult, like I get it more now, like, um, especially like I remember when I didn't get accepted into grad school and she told me about like something she had wanted to do that she had really applied for and she didn't get in, but she tried again and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, damn, see, these are the things like, I wish you had shared more with me when I was younger, mm -hmm. because again, it made it seem like you had everything all figured out. And so anytime I mess up, I feel like, I'm way behind. Yeah. And see, I had a different experience. I feel like I was seeing all my parents' failures. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> um, but I no, but you know, I, I saw plenty and just saw them bounce back and be resilient. And I was just like, okay, that's what happens. You feel mm -hmm. and bounce back and that's fine. Um so I don't, for me, it's not, it's, and then I, I guess also for me, when I talk about that feeling of adulthood, it's just like a feeling that I guess I thought it would be like this. I arrive, I feel confident mm. and stable and secure, all the other words. And yeah, I haven't gotten there. I gotten more there but not there. And I don't know why I thought 30 was going to be this magical thing. Like mm -hmm. I turned 30 and I was like, and then that's sink your wings. <laughs> mm -mm. And then I turned 30 and it was just like, well, I'm here on this beach and that's nice. <laughs> I, but those I feel real of, insecure about some things. <laughs> those parts of feelings come from, come from within, Russ, um, you know? <laughs> Like I was saying earlier before we started recording, I think we build those things from betting on ourselves and then like getting on the other side of it and being like, I really did do that shit. I'm going to leave the place. Yes. No. I am <laughs> <laughs> no, no, moving as fast as I can. Give me I'm time. just saying that is a level of getting to where it's just like, you know what? I have been through some shit. I have handled some shit and I can handle some more shit type feeling like that makes me feel secure because I might've had some setbacks, but I have yet to really be on my ass. Like I do know that when I bet on me and I really work at stuff, like it works out. Yeah. And, and, and I can, I feel confident about that regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of, especially going through like different money struggles and different things. Like I have really had to get to a point where I'm like, girl, you be all right. Like, even though, <laughs> Even though I've had moments of like, whew, where is this going to come from and how is this going to go? At the end of the day, it has always worked out. Whether it's me or divine intervention, the shit works. So I can feel um, secure in that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think we gain that from just like experience. And, and as a young, as like when we're younger, we don't have that lived experience to really like lean back on. And I think that's why stuff can feel a lot more topsy-turvy than like as we get older and we really gain that perspective of like, damn, I really, life has lifed me. <laughs> and I'm and I'm, uh, I'm still standing here. It's really, it might be okay. I think, I, <laughs> oh yes. I think my problem is I, I'm never okay with okay. Like I, that's not true. There's definitely, there's definitely been times I have settled for okay. But 
um, I guess when I think about the perspective of like what I thought the feeling mm-hmm. should be, it's not the okay. The okay is just like, uh, the okay is the, I think, I think, I feel like okay is for 20. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was going to be like, okay, life is like me. And look at me, I have triumphant. And it's like, I'm just kind of like, I may have, Mm-hmm. And I want it to be this moment of like, I don't have to catch my breath. Mm-hmm. And I've won. But apparently that's for your 60s. And so, you know, 34 <laughs> years. <laughs> okay. so we gonna, yeah. we gonna, we'll see. I'm going to try to hang on. We're we going to see. We're going to see how yeah. I do it. I don't know what phase of life that comes up where you just feel like, and I won. I mean, that, that's the dream, right? We all get to a point where we can really look back and be like, yes, yeah, so I've, I've accomplished it all. Mm. I don't know because even like I was listening to um like a married couple podcast thing earlier today and they were talking about how you know they've been together 20 some odd years and they still learning shit and they still got shit they got to work through and I think and they were talking about the miss but I'm saying like there still is even a misconception with that that you'll just like find your person and you're like married them and then you know you might have some stuff you got to figure out at some point and oh but like that that's it's okay is that normal people's mindset on relationships because n- no that has never been i I have no the minute you add another person mm-hmm. oh, anything yeah. that you want stability to like i don't think there's ever a time there won't be work right but see i think we have to take our mindset in some areas and stretch it to like other areas of our life and just accept that that's life so mm-hmm. like I say that to say you constantly gonna be working on stuff, but yeah. no. But I'm saying like you were saying they were like because people think you just find your person and you're good. I'm like I don't think that. What people think. Some people, yeah. People think okay. And that's why when their marriages go through struggles, they think they're failing because they thought you was just supposed to. Even though all the old people who have ever made it fifty some odd years have always said we've had our ups and downs, but they don't sit and tell you what them ups and downs really were. You just be like, Mm-mm, somebody cheated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not like whatever real shit they were actually going through which is why I like listening to stuff like that from people who are going to give you like realistic perspectives mm-hmm. of like different things they disagreed on or like I made this career choice and my spouse was really uncertain and that sent them into a huge anxiety mode and we argued all the time like that type of shit but anyway um on my other podcast on parents are people i had a guest on who's mentioned he said like we don't think about that we don't think we're gonna coast in any other part of life like no one thinks they're gonna go to the gym and just like bust it out and work work out for like 10 years get a nice body and then think they get to sit on their ass and just like eat donuts and that they'll get to maintain that body we don't think about (laughs) so like why do we try to apply that logic to any other area of our life when it comes to like our mental growth, our spiritual growth, just our humanness in general, like if you want to stay in a certain state, you are always going to be working at it. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, I thought it was a good one. I was like, man, that's some real shit because you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anywho. Mm. So, okay. Sounds like we're not failing at this. This is just, so. <laughs> you're not supposed to have it it's figured true. out. Yeah, it's just not what we expected. <laughs> yeah. It's not at all what we expected. None of us know how to budget or to stick to our budget. We still are confused us. by taxes. <laughs> taxes are still very confused by taxes. We don't know why the government just won't tell us. Because some stuff was stupid when they set it up. But that's the fucking thing. Whenever I think about the fact that I think me and credit scores are the same age. (laughs) I'm just like, what? And it pisses me off when like I bring that up and then there's always someone with amazing credit that has never had a problem. That's just like, well, actually all you have to do is shut the fuck up because you (laughs) don't know. The concept is dumb, okay? The fact that paying your rent every month, which doesn't, doesn't help you, the fact that you the most can't... important one, but because to me, when I'm just like, and I, when I'm trying to figure mm-hmm. out if a person is stable, I'm like, do they have a place to stay? <laughs> 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 right. You can be you... like, 
cat is a great person. No, me. And he, and he drags no drags no cat. Where is he sleeping on? It depends the night. It depends the night. Nah, nah. Yeah. I can't say you could pay all your damn household bills on time every fucking month and then be like, hey, I would like to buy a car. And they'll be like, <laughs> we don't trust you. We don't trust you. Like, what? I paid the last one off. Why not? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I remember when I paid my car off, I had like, a, it had gotten low enough to a balance where I was just like, I'm paying this bad boy off. I'm done with it. Um, And my credit score, it did nothing. It did nothing. It didn't help it. As a matter of fact, it might have dropped a few points. And I was like, what the fuck? And the credit lady or whomever I was talking to at the time, because I think I was trying to like refinance my home or something. And she was like, yeah, we don't care about that. Um, maybe pay down some of these credit cards. And I was like, you telling me paying off this whole ass loan. And I had paid like a fat amount off to pay that freaking loan off. I was like, you're telling me that did nothing. But this little $2,000 credit card over here, if I, (laughs) if I put money on that, that would have done something. Cause really you just have the realization of like, so this, this is a game to you motherfucker. This is a game to (laughs) y'all. it's just to keep me in the mix anytime they I want. see one of those like tiktok accounts or mm-hmm. videos that's just like hey 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 are you thinking about paying off all your credit cards and that will make your bill your credit go up it won't that's a myth. <laughs> let me tell you some some finagly shit over here <laughs> anytime i see one of those videos i get so upset because i'm like why, why do i have the finagle <laughs> why uh, why why? Why? Why, do I have to finagle? why can't if it's if you're mad because i owe people why can't i just pay the people back and you not be mad no more why are you so mad at me <laughs> why do i have yeah. to pay them back sacrifice a pig under the new moon mm-hmm. drink from its blood and do mm-hmm. a dance before mm-hmm. my credit score would go up why is that a thing i um I purchased a vehicle this past weekend and even the guy who was like looking at my credit, he was like, there is nothing strange on here. Like, I don't even, I don't understand why your score isn't higher. I was like, it's a fucking mystery to me too. And he was like, it looks like you pay everything on time. You don't have anything else. And I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy on there. Nothing's too high. Nothing's too low. I, I couldn't tell you, man. They were just like, we're going to award you this. Thanks. Let's move on with our day. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a little validating, though, for him to be just really looking at it and being like, yeah, don't get this. <laughs> Maybe that would be the thing that would make me feel like adult if I was better with money. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. We're just talking and I'm just having revelations <laughs> of like, I think also some of this is just you. Just a new problem. <laughs> that is, none of us can budget. Work on. Like, eh, some, some of us can budget. Some of us have been forced to. Bum me out, man. Okay. Mm-hmm. That budget to bum me out. And I have decided for my mental health to put a boundary around <laughs> budgeting. I got you. On days that it feels not cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we don't do it, okay? Nah, nah. <laughs> I feel that budget based on vibes, girl. I used to budget stuff to the T, and I remember having a friend of mine at my house while I was like doing my budget, and I had got it like I'll pay all my bills, and then I'll have thirty two dollars. <sighs> yeah, and she was like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, <laughs> and I was like, "This is my budget," and she was just like you are how are you like this is why you're miserable like she was just (laughs) like why would you pay all these things and leave yourself 30 something dollars till the next pay period and and in my mind it was like that's just what you do and yeah something about that conversation was helpful for me because i did start kind of changing some things to an extent where like i do actually in my budget (laughs) make sure that I allocate like a fucking fun money something for me to piss away that is just my own and I set that up that's 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 a line item yeah along with everything else and then like if that means that like something got to get put off to the next pay period if that means that you want your money on 22nd and you ain't gonna get it until the 25th or whatever oh well because I'm gonna go out to eat I'm gonna 
that's another thing that pisses me off because I don't feel like I splurge a lot. I'm like, I don't even shop. I barely go on vacation. I don't even do anything extravagant. I just like to eat out. <laughs> like, why is this ruining my budget? But anyway, um, but like, yeah, if that just if that means like, you know, some stuff gotta get a little bit put on hold, I'm i I've become okay with that. I used to be like really particular about that when I was a lot younger, but now I've gotten to the point where I'm like, child, I'm not about to set up here and be miserable. I think that's why most of us ignore our student loans. Like, I'm not giving y'all. I will not give y'all <laughs> no $362 a month for I'm fucking what? Sure <laughs> the US government already has enough sound bites of me on this podcast talking about <laughs> how I'm not paying that back. I mean, y'all. The court case that they're building. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I gotta say it again. I I feel like there's enough sound bites of me saying that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna be like, yeah, that was a whole other thing for me. I was just like, no, I will not be struggling every month just to pay y'all for what. No, thank you. I'm gonna move on with my life because I've decided they're unreasonable. That's it. What on about my day? It makes me happier. But I know some other people who are like, it's better just to pay it off, and then you can just shut up. I'm not gonna do it. I'm stonewalling with everybody else. <laughs> everybody else really needs to get the people who are not on board need to get on board so we can we Stop can end this. Holding up the movement. Y'all part of history with us. They don't want us to win because once we realize that collectively <laughs> look, don't get me on this rant. <laughs> do not get me on this rant. Yeah. Mm, itching. Because there are so many like good collective things. Like, you know, they have those um no buy groups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where it's just like, no, before we give corporations money at all, let's hold out as much as we can. You need a hair dryer. Who has a hair dryer that they're willing to give up that good work decently? What do you need? Oh, you need a the, 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 some books? Okay, then she'll give you all the books and you'll give her the hair. Like, and, and there's so many great things that we could all be doing. I is I like literally I, maybe a year max, and mm-hmm. they would give in. That brainwashed American individualism shit is what really keeps us from doing stuff like that. Like I love watching other countries protest. I'm like, that's how you fuck friends up. fuck shits up, and I love Them it. Every time. They're just so passionate. Was that where the farmers were like spraying government yep. buildings and shit? <laughs> Them people was fired up in Europe. Yep. Angry French farmers block roads, spray manure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shut, shut that shit down. We don't, we don't. And when other people do it, there are so many people who are like annoyed by that. Like, how dare you <clears throat> block? I have to go to work and you guys are blocking traffic for your, well, for your protests. And I told you in, yeah, when I can't remember one of the protests I went to, um, probably like 2015, 2016, mm-hmm. um, here in Atlanta, um, it was beautiful. Like we were, we were chanting, we formed a drum circle. We had people getting out the cars to join us. And it was a beautiful thing. Just for me to come home and see on the news, they're like, and the people were angry and they were violent. And, da, da, da. and I was like, what the hell are they talking about? I was there. They found one random moment and mm-hmm. made it like that's because they were doing all this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not the narrative they chose Media. to spread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's the media. It's the media. So we need it is because they're like you said they found this one little clip, and then they turn the story into a whole thing. So the question is, yeah, I ain't gonna go there. But we need one of them like shit that happened in the movies where people are just like, I have taken over all of the newsfeed, <laughs> and they like. I think anonymous something. was supposed to be working on that. Yeah, like that's who we guys? thought was gonna make it happen. You yeah. know what happened to those people? Um. Also, what, what, got married, what? had babies. I just settled down. What was that? Overturn the government anymore. Yeah, we got a little off track there. But like, so I will say though, I think also some of the things that like makes it hard to feel like we the real Mm grown-ups are are real grown-ups is like I feel like there was this like traditional lane Mm -hmm. 
our path. And when we were looking at adults, like in the nineties and so forth, like most of them had this traditional path. It looked very, okay. They went to college and then they met their sweetheart. They got married, they bought a house, they got a kid and they did this and they worked in the industry. They just that. And for a lot of us, that's not what our paths are looking like. I I also think though, like, so one, we know that in those times, like in the eighties and nineties, like one income could support a household in a way that we just really don't see anymore. Also though, a lot more people were tradesmen and did a lot of other types of things. And then they pushed us, our generation of like, yeah, you should go to college. You shouldn't work as hard as I did, or you shouldn't have to do the things that I did. When in actuality, we need more of that. Like we need more of that variety. All of us should not have gone to college. Mm -hmm. And we know that now. I don't know why. Like, let we should blame our parents for ruining. <laughs> but no, for real. Like, <clears throat> even the mindset. I like, I say quickly because honestly, if you just listen to our podcast casually, like fifteen minutes here, if this episode, <laughs> twenty minutes of this episode, I see someone walking away being like. Oh, the the I hate my parents, people. No, no, <laughs> we love them. Look at that blame everything on y'all. We love them, but like for real, I'm blaming their generation, not necessarily like the specific parents, but I am gonna blame their generation because they yeah. pushed this college shit when they didn't go. I mean, not everybody because everyone's like my my mom joined the military. She didn't go to college until like later on when the military paid for it. That's when she was like, oh, I'll take some night classes. Um, and I think, and I know a lot of people whose parents later in life took a night class or did something like that, did the thing. Um, and then of course there are those who like followed that path, blah, blah, blah. But again, I think regardless of the path that the parents took, it was definitely pushed onto our generation a lot more that this is the recipe for success. And of course, a lot of us have found out it just, it just isn't. And I was thinking about this recently because I saw, you know, them little stupid pop the balloon if you don't like the guy or the girl thing. Mm -hmm. Have you seen those on social media? So there was a guy that walked out. Pop, 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 balloons pop. <laughs> they asked that man what he did. He said he's an electrician. He also does um, like body work on cars and he's like a DJ. Mm -hmm. Pop, pop, pop. And they asked the girl, like, why'd you pop your balloon? And she was like, I need a man that's like a business owner or like a doctor or a lawyer. Girl, do you not know what electricians make? <laughs> like, and that's why I said, even the mindset, like, you want to hear, yes, he has a degree in this and he's blah, blah, blah. Girl, a lawyer got what? Student loans and not no time. Doctors have no time. <laughs> you do not, like, I don't know why we've been brainwashed to believe that that is the pinnacle of like what someone should be doing business owner how you know he don't own a let he ain't his a uh, a uh, uh, a contract electrician or some shit mm -hmm. under his own name like you have no idea but even what we view as success has changed in our mind versus like back then like our parents and racial stuff there were more people who were electricians and plumbers and construction and those were like l seen as valued professions yeah and you could have those professions and provide for a whole family. And I'm and I'm not saying it's not true today. Like you can still get one of be a tradesman, get one of those types of professions and provide for your family. But our mindset on it is totally different. We don't see blue collar work as like I, I, I don't fucking get it. I don't know. We don't see blue collar workers as successful. Mm -hmm. And I think there can be nothing further from the truth. And I think we're circling back around to realizing that as we're all sitting around at our desk, unhappy, yeah. um, with no fucking money. And then you talk to somebody else who didn't follow your path and you're like, man, how are you? And they're like, I started off at UPS and I worked my way up and now I make a hundred thousand dollars and I'm happy. And you're like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a construction worker and I do Bob and you're like, man, so yeah, I mean, we debate the the traditional versus not true, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, the previous generations, I think, just sold us the wrong idea and tipped the scales in a whole different way. And I think that we're going to see a shift going forward where we're going to push our kids to be like, I mean, it's cool if you want to go to, I'm very much a like, it's cool if that's what you want to do. Like, if you know what you want to do and that path requires college and like, sure, fine. But I would much rather you like take a little bit of time and like actually figure that out. But we also need people who can build houses and fix things and 
grow things and do like a whole bunch of other stuff we need the arts like people try to dab yeah. play that but we need the arts I also feel like friendships in adulthood look different than, again, I thought it would look. Mm -hmm. I don't know my parents, and I know it was always going to be different for me than my parents. My parents are both very social people, very mm -hmm. just charismatic, outgoing personalities. And mm -hmm. they always had lots of friends. And uh, my mom and my biological dad, when they were married, like, used to throw parties all the time, like turned our whole basement into a dance floor, had the little bar in there and everything. And I knew that's not what adulthood was going to look like for me, but I didn't recognize because in my adulthood, I didn't move a bit and how hard it is to like form friendships or keep friendships when you don't just stay where you grew up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for most of my childhood we were at least in the same state and mom's friends would travel to come see her all of that my dad he's always been on the go um, it's a lot I still don't know about that man's life <laughs> who knows who knows about him and his friendships but um so I don't really know what was going on there but like I saw them just like have strong friendships and a lot of their friendships were like, oh, I've known her for 28 years, stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what I expected. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of moved around for a bit. And when I would be like, huh, I have to make friends and I'm an adult. There's nobody that I'm just sitting next to for eight hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they kind of have to get to know my name. I kind of mm -hmm. have to figure out if I like them or not um, and how hard that was. Yeah. I always think about a friend of mine whose mom used to have, because my, my mom's never been a big like friend person. <laughs> she's she's kind of introverted. She's very introverted, as a matter of fact. Um, but she had a lot of siblings. Mm -hmm. so and she even talks about she's talked to me about like how it's made um finding friends a little bit harder as an adult because my my grand my grandparents were like your, your siblings are your friends you don't need no damn friends like no you can't go no you can't whatever and they grew up in the country but I had a friend who I used to go over her house like um and like every Friday her mom and her friends would get together at like one of the other friends house and they would just like try new recipes mm -hmm. Just like get together and just fucking cook on a, on Friday. I can't imagine. <laughs> I would love it. I would mm. love it. I tried at one point with some friends, like, let's like do brunch. Let's like cook. And it happened for like, we were doing it like once a month and it happened a few months. And then like somebody had a baby and then someone had a, and it's just like. We, hey, you so tried it for a while. Just kind of, you know, at some point <laughs> it falls off. But, we, but yeah, they used to do that. They used to just like get together and just like, again, just like try a new recipe. And I think stuff like that is like really cool. But yeah, I've never, I've also never had a friend group like that either. Like I've had like friends, like these two friends over here, that friend over there, the, okay, but yeah, like yeah. we weren't all like, we're the Fab Five and like we've all always hung out since like whatever, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Or like, um, you know, and then I think about how TV shows make that more of a no, I, that like was, Until I moved to Atlanta, I, yeah, I was usually in the threesome. Mm, mm -hmm. Well, let me, hold on. Okay. I was usually in a group <laughs> and it was usually like three of us in high school. It was a group and it was three of us. And then, you know, you had friends outside of them, but it was like, you know, central people. And then middle school was two, but yeah, no. And then um, college, it was us three. Mm -hmm. uh, Oklahoma was us three. Yeah. Then I came to Atlanta and then it was just, okay, my individual relationship with you, my individual relationship <laughs> with you. <laughs> Y'all want to come together? No, no. Okay. All right. Well, I guess. Yeah. I now have to have five events to go to yeah. this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would love to cultivate that type of thing. I was looking, some memories popped up on my phone of like a couple of, I was like, I, I had events at my home before. I used to have like a little party yeah. here and there. Yeah. A little game day thing. Like you have to introduce like, your boyfriends. 
You know, you <laughs> throw <laughs> so, Wow. Wow. Thing for a while. No, 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 I went to three. No, ma'am. Those events were not to introduce no man. There's okay. only one time okay. <laughs> that I have said, okay. hey, friend. Okay. Yeah, the other times we were just having parties and happen to have a new man and happen to have this be like, y'all, talk to him and let me oh, know. Oh, yeah. That did wrong. happen to go. Yeah. You right. Yes. I did that one time where I was like, I was yeah. one time. But yes. I would say that only happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> and he was not my man. I will clarify it. I mean, it was not my man. Somebody I was seeing, and I needed y'all to tell me that he was a little autistic. That is all. <laughs> that is all. But <laughs> I did not orchestrate a whole damn cookout. Because I did not know that's what you specifically wanted us to know. But now I'm like cracking up because you introduced him to a group of social workers. <laughs> I mean, all my friends were social workers, but now you can remember that I was like, something ain't, something, something, Yes, yes. I don't know. That's what you meant, though. I just thought you meant it, and they like, he's a man. I want to trust him. Mm -mm. But he be Mm -mm. doing stuff. And so we was like, look, and he was like, yeah, no, he's, there's, yeah, oh, he a little something. He he got a diagnosis, is what I felt like, but. Um, but I did I wanted to have a cookout anyway I did not orchestrate that whole damn cookout just for y'all to meet that man don't do that don't do that okay. again those different events that I had was me trying what, to what cultivate about the, what about the little mini guy little mini man he just happened to be there be there okay he did just happen to, I'm I promise you he just happened to be there because I wanted a Halloween party that was a Halloween party okay. a Halloween okay. game night and he just happened to be there, there. <laughs> my okay. current man okay. yes i did say hey y'all gather around you and like look at what i found off your show pony and that's okay my current partner is the only person i ever was for real for real like y'all gather around <laughs> come see what i got now the <laughs> other times were just like that's who i was with at dating or seeing at the time and i wanted to have an event me having those events was me trying to cultivate like i said this friendship hangout shit having game nights having a little cookout having a little my birthday parties little stuff like that was just me being like i want to host stuff no, i want people to like get together and have things thank you for the clarification yeah to edit it, out the laugh whatever <laughs> <laughs> if that's how y'all feel whatever my goal was just to get people together but yeah i, pop, I popped up and saw one of the memories and i was like damn i for real used to do that i ain't had shit here i've wanted to i just don't know enough people here to like gather people up but anyway or relationships <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean i didn't expect them to be great so okay. I, you know they're it's living up to the expectations there mm-hmm. um but yeah definitely you know i think we i think for a lot of people when they're a kid you expect like oh i'll probably be married by this age a lot of us had the before 30 i'll be married and have had whatever children i will have mm-hmm. and yeah no a lot of us have had that awakening that like nah <laughs> um nah and it's okay i just want to say to the people who are still you know like who are upset because they have crossed over that threshold like y- y- you can have kids later <laughs> no but you <laughs> You can find love a little bit later. Um, And honestly, now that, again, I think I have those like, yeah, that's what I thought. But now that I'm on the other side of stuff, like I'm cool Mm -hmm. because I can't imagine. I know like you you have your daughter and y'all are great. I can't imagine having had a child in my twenties. I, I'm sure I would have figured out it would have been fine. Um, But me then and me now are like, whew, different mindsets, different. I am so much more ready for this. So, and I know most people don't make that choice. Most people aren't like, I'm 25. Well, there are plenty of people who do though, who are like, I'm 25 and I'm ready for children. But there's plenty of people who don't consciously make that decision. They just buck up and do what they got to do. Um, I could not have made that conscious decision in my 20s. I did not make that conscious decision. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, know there's, I know there's people who don't. It's just like, it happens. You're just like, hi, right, I'm showing up today. Right. Um, but like, 
Yeah, when I think, I'm saying like, when I think about the fact that I thought, oh, before 30, I will have done these things. But the whole time I was going through my 20s, it was like, none of this feels like the right time. None, mm. No time of this. <laughs> none of this feels, mainly, I guess, because I wasn't settled down with anyone. Um, it certainly didn't feel like a great idea. I don't know, man. I don't know why. Why that's the 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 threshold. I don't know. 30 is old. Well, yeah. And then you turn 30 and you'd be like, I still like Cartoon Network. <laughs> <laughs> right. You don't feel old at all. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. That's that's what it is. Like when you're younger, 30 seems so much older and so much more mature. So like of course you would you would be married and have your children with your picket fence and your house and your blah 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 blah. And like that just ain't what's happening. Well, and it's kind of interesting because I don't think Generation Alpha is going to grow up having those same thoughts about 30 as we did. Because they are growing up seeing 30-year-olds with pink hair Mm -hmm. and bright, beautiful tattoos showing at the Mm -hmm. doctor's office. Mm -hmm. They're Mm -hmm. used to 30-year-olds rapping along, knowing the newest artists that came out right along with them as they're on their way to school like it's very we're more enmeshed mm-hmm. than I think mm-hmm. we are than the, when we were kids in our parents generation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we're not like just like disappearing and with saying that I guess we can say that 30 isn't a feeling it is just is what it is you're 30 you're an adult <laughs> you're 40 you're an adult whatever your age is you're an adult now whether it feels like it or not whether mm-hmm. it's like following a path for what an adult path looks like or creating a whole new path of your own there is no grand arrival moment where you know aha this change just know things have changed well, with that said, guys, that is all we have for today's episode. We will have a new episode for you next Sunday. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at she will alchemy or on TikTok and on TikTok at she will alchemy podcast. And we'll have a new episode for you guys next Sunday. Bye. Bye.